Hey, I'm Tyler, and I'm coming back on, and this is, I'm filming this before the first uh, Tyler's Man Inspire was even played. So, you know, I'm just kind of coming on saying, because, see, I told people, friends and family what the show was about and they were all against it. I had a couple of family members say they would disown me if I would continue doing this. Uh, so I'm not against God, I'm not the Antichrist as, as some of them have called me, I'm the Antichrist. I'm not against God, I'm against evil, so I'm anti-evil. If there is such a thing, that would be me. And all I'm trying to do is get everybody to view it as one, because every religion is all mixed up, and everybody has different beliefs and different things. And if all I'm trying to do is like say the Catholic, the Lutheran, the non-denomination, the Christian, all of them believe in God and Adam and Eve and all that. So throw away all the other garbage that they don't agree on. Sit them down by themselves have them write out or record what they believe in. Then get somebody like myself to watch the tapes or read the scripts that they wrote and see what areas or what part they actually agreed on. And then go and show them, say, Okay, well, this is where y'all agreed. And, and they would be surprised at how many times they would have agreed rather than disagreed. And if, and if they could just say, let's agree to disagree, instead of yelling and fighting and having wars and people dying and, I mean... All that, it's nonsense. I just, I'm watching all this on TV and seeing what the fathers before me went through and bled on this land and fought in other wars. For what? For religion? For money? For power? For what? It wasn't for God. Because God is love, and God says, love thy neighbor. And what I've done seems to really help is say to the least of these. That's, that's his children. And like, the next time you're getting, bo you're getting bothered by you know, someone in front of you is driving real slow. Think in your head, say, to the least of these. Think, think that in your head. Tell yourself that. Have your conscience tell you. And then you'll start doing it all the time. Tell yourself to the least of these as if God himself was speaking right to you, saying, yes, and that is my child, you know, picking a fight with you, you know, whatever. If I mean, the little retarded ones, the, the ones that look funny, the, uh, uh, I don't know, you, you pick. You just say to the least of these, Tell yourself to the least of these, and you are the least of these, because there's going to be times in your life that 
you're going to bother people with something you're doing. And then you are going to be the least. And other people are going to have to look at you and say, to the least of these. And all that means is, God, even when the least of your children, I'm going to help out or I'm going to, you know, donate money or, or whatever it is that to, to the least of his children that are barely making it, you know, they, or maybe they've made it really far, maybe they're like, Paris Hilton, and they don't need nothing. She has everything. I mean, everything's at her fingertips. But I mean, she's still a least of these because money has a lot of power. And with that money, I mean, she has a bunch of different, she could do things totally different quit being so scandalous and showing her body off and making a, a basically a fool of herself because the cameras love her and they watch her and people want to know about her and and instead she could do good things you know she got a lot of money she, she could help poor families instead of opening nightclubs, wasting thousands of dollars on, on clothes, on a little bitty dog clothes, and, you know, but that's a different, that's a different th subject. I mean, you got rich people and you've got poor people. If they would just help one another, then the world would be at peace. There would be no fighting. There would be no... I mean, look at the black people. You know, I have nothing against... I was raised in Houston, Texas, in Mission Bend. It was a fairly decent neighborhood. When I left, it was mainly brothers, and I learned how to play dominoes, and I learned about fighting, and I learned about, you know, drugs, and how the world really was, and I learned a lot where I grew up, and then I came up north, and they're, they're like in the Ice Age, they're literally... They're, they're really, like, they, they're they very, um, what's the word, conservative, or, I don't know the words, I'm, I'm not very smart, I've, I've only got, I dropped out in ninth grade and I was homeschooled, I don't have uh, book smarts, but I have a lot of street smarts, do a lot of drugs, a lot of dealing, not drugs, but with like money and stuff, and I, ha I made lots of money, and I did lots of partying, and I have nothing to show for it except for I'm still alive, thank God, and I have slurred speech, and I can't really walk that well, but... It's better than the doctors. They said I'd never be able to walk again. And I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing that, but I'm very proud that I'm walking. And it took a lot of... And it took a lot of willpower of telling myself no pain, no gain. And getting myself up and and walking and uh, if I fall into the wall just say oh well you know no pain no gain and get up and do it again and that kind of roughness 
neck on toughness and willpower came from my childhood and where I grew up and the kind of people that I, the kind of people I was around and um, associated with. And my brother was a big part of it too. He was just, you know, he was a pretty tough dude. And, and you know, watching him and, you know, he got in a lot of fights. I didn't really fight. I was more of a, a lover than a fighter. My mom always said it took more of a man to walk away from a fight than stick around and fight or something like that. So, you know, I listened to my mom and I didn't, I didn't really even like to fight, so I didn't really fight, but I watched my brother. He fought quite a bit and he didn't back down from anybody. And you know, that that was the difference between me and him. I would back down from people just to avoid fighting with them. And I don't even know why I'm talking about this. But anyway, um, why I'm coming out with this show for the second time, I'm not coming out with any more until I get some people to agree with me. And, and not much, so much agree with everything, but agree with me to where they can come on the show and if we talk about something where we don't agree that we, we can agree to agree to disagree, and that's that's basically what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody to come on the show with me, and then I'll do it again. Cause you want to see this show for a little while until I come out, and I wanna come on, come on and do another episode and try to get somebody to come on the show. This, the, the first show that I did still even hasn't come out. Today's like the 14th and I don't think it comes out until the 28th or something. So, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of crossing my fingers hoping, you know, that I'm going to hear something from somebody about this and um, you should have got my address and phone number, they're going to put it on there, get a pen and paper and write down my address and my telephone number. In fact, I'm going to call him and have him put that on right now. Get you a pen and paper. Write down my address so you can write me a letter and what, what you thought about the show, the first and the second one. And you can give me a call at the phone numbers that will be on you. Uh, is this Christian? No, could you tell him to come on over and put on the address and phone number that we were, that we chose? Yeah, Alright, thanks, Joel. Alright. Cool. Alright, well, they're gonna put it on so you better get your pen and paper. But anyway, um,. I'm um, really, this is a new thing for me, you know, I'm kind of a producer, host, um, I'm doing the whole thing with uh, Christian's help and Dan's help, Dan West, he's here every once in a while, Christian's here usually, every time I've come in he's been here, and Joel's been here, so I have a few people helping me, but I forgot to come up with what I want to talk about, 
and be the host and the producer and all this stuff, you know, and I've never done your show. So, you know, you've got to give me a little bit of, of uh, patience with some of this. And I have a um, brain injury, so I repeat a lot of this stuff and I have a slurred speech, so you probably can't understand everything I'm saying, but I would recommend putting in your, your television on caption so you can catch the words that I say when I, when I say them. And, um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to come on and say this time that I'm not the Antichrist, I'm the anti-evil. I'm like totally against evil. Perversion, lust of any kind, drugs, um, just all kinds of perversion. Tobacco, drugs, pharmaceuticals, or drugs, they say drug on there, it just says medical drugs. So it's okay that a doctor says take this drug, but you can't have this drug. And that's not exactly, you see, you know, back in the 70s, you know, our parents messed up and marijuana became a drug. Before that, it was, you know, what it is now is, you know, it's natural. It's natch. People call me natch because I'm naturally nice and down to earth and... Yeah, what's up? Um, the address and phone number. Oh, it's not Bob No, it's not. Okay, he's about to put it on, so write, write it down. But anyway... Yeah, the marijuana that that's not a drug. That that's it's just a drug if if there it is. If you if you want to say it's a drug, then say it's just a drug. But pharmaceuticals, they even call those drugs. They call them drugs. That's what they are. They are drugs. They're just legal drugs. Because doctors say, oh, they can go ahead and take these. But there's all these friggin' side effects, and you might die. Well, you can go ahead and take this, but you cannot smoke that. Now, should we be able to eat coke plants? No. Now that, I'll have to, you know, disagree, you know. Certain kinds of drugs out there are perverted. They've twisted them to where they're addictive. But if you use them right, then they, they're they for your benefit. Now, I, I just found this out. I was surprised. There's probably a lot, a lot of people that didn't know this. Tobacco. Tobacco was originally used for reducing swelling. No nicotine, no nothing. If you just smoked tobacco, you it was it would reduce the swelling of whatever swelling. If you twisted your I don't know, I don't really don't know what it was for. I mean, I do know it was for reducing swelling. No, I don't know if that was like when you twist your ankle or you have a cut, you have, you know, and swells of, I don't know. But I do know that it was used for reducing swelling. See, now, if we get people out there and start saying, use it this way, and if, if the government figures out a way to where they can legally produce and, and, and like market 
drugs for what they're really used for, or tobacco for what you're really used, used for, then I think we'd have a lot happier of a life, and our life would be longer, we live longer. I mean, my dad passed away at the age of 47. God said that we should live to be 150. That's how long he... Adam lived till like 998. That is a long freaking time, dude. <laughs> That's a long time, but my dad only... He, had, he died from a diabetic heart attack. Nobody knew he had diabetes till the last minute. And he died at a young age because of it. I'm there, and, and my son's mother, her favorite uncle, died at the same age, like a month before my dad. And her uncle died from, a, I think it was a heart attack also, I don't know. But it was some fluke just out of the blue that he didn't know about, and it killed him. And people are dying left and right, and it shouldn't be happening. The government and and these people are out there perverting, I mean, tobacco industries. The government makes money off that on taxes. That's why the government won't stop it. It's killing people. I used to be a smoker until up to a couple months, a month ago. I've been a smoker for 12 years. It's a very addictive, very, very, very addictive and very, um, very easy to start smoking again. If you quit, uh, you won't, if you get around smokers and you don't have a good enough willpower about yourself, well then, it's easy to start smoking again. And my time is almost up here. My audience, people watching, um, please write me at that address that came on if y'all wrote it down. Let me know if you liked the show you want to see this again, what you thought about this show, if you thought that I'm anti-Christ or anti-evil, that's what I want to know, what my audience thought, my audience, what the viewers thought, if I was anti-Christ, against God, or I'm against evil. If I'm against evil, then I'm done with evil. I'm done completely with evil. That's why I quit smoking. If I'm done with evil, take that D out, put put it on evil, and then you're, you have devil. You have, I'm done with... I'll take, I'll take the fall as the devil. I'm done with being the devil. I'm one with God, though. See, if you take D off of done, and you take D off, then you have one. And then I'm either one with God or I'm one with His children. And that's who I am. <clears throat> I want to be one with. I want to be one with y'all. And how we're going to be one is we're going to be cousins. Because brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles and nieces and nephew, you know, that it. it you can't, uh, that's sexist, or black and white, the same thing, but when you're cousins, you can have a girl cousin, or you can have a boy cousin, you can have a black cousin, you can have a white cousin, but they're both called cousins, because the sons of God came together, cousins, pretty cool, I gotta go.